Let's now talk about the next type of equations that we would like to solve. And uh, we're going to return to linear equations. And because we're solving uh, first order equations at this point, I will be interested in solving first order linear equation. Uh, so if you might remember, the first order linear equation will look like this. So first uh, order linear OG is going to have this form uh, A1 of x y prime uh, plus A0 of x y equal to, uh, let's say, uh, f of x. So we looked before at the uh, nth order linear equation and had more coefficients. For the first order, only two uh, of these remain, a1 of x and a0 of x. So there are some functions of x. And then y and y prime will only appear in this form, just like you see here. Uh, if I have an equation like that, I should always be able to uh, rewrite it in a different way. Uh, so if a1 of x is not equal to 0, then I can divide by a1 of x. And that will give me y prime plus a0 of x divided by a1 of x y equal to f of x divided by a0 of x. Uh, so then if we set if we set p of x equal to a0 of x over a1 of x and q of x equal to f of x over a0 of x. And then our equation takes a form y prime plus p of x y equal to q of x. And uh, that, this equation is actually exactly the same as the original equation. And we will say that I have a linear equation written in the standard form. Uh, and of course, it's a first order. I'm not going to keep writing first order over, over and over again uh, in the standard form. All right. So uh, let's maybe give some examples. Example number one. Uh, y prime plus x squared y equal to zero. Uh, certainly, this looks like a linear equation in the standard form. And uh, in this case, uh, p of x is x squared and q of x is 0. Uh, but also note that I can uh, re-express this in a different way. I can write this equation as y prime equal to minus x squared y. Well, and this equation is a separable equation.
And because it's a separable equation, I actually already know how to solve it. So I don't really need to solve it as a linear equation. I can solve it as a separable equation. Actually, let's do that. So can solve. Um, so dy over dx is equal to minus x squared y. Therefore, dy over y is minus x squared dx. So then we integrate both sides. And the integrals are really easy to compute. So ln absolute value of y is minus integral of x squared x cubed over phi plus c. All right. So the important uh, point that you have to take out of this example is that you should be able to, you might be able to solve the same equation by using different techniques because uh, the same equation can be classified in several different categories. Uh, example number two, uh, y prime, or maybe xy prime, plus two sine x y equal to uh, e to the x. Uh, that is equation still in this form, right? Because it's a function of x times y prime plus another function of x times y equal to the third function of x, right? That's precisely what I got here. So this is a linear equation. But it is not in a standard form because the coefficient in front of y prime is not equal to 1. So to write this in standard form, what we need to do is to divide by x, and we'll get y prime plus 2 sine x over x y equal to e to the x over x. So then this would be my p of x, and this would be q of x. Uh, and this equation actually is, you can easily check, is not separable. So for it, I genuinely need to come up with a different technique uh, that will allow me to solve an equation like this. Okay, so uh, let's try to look at the example number three, actually. Uh, let's say I want to solve y prime plus y equal to e to the power x. So uh, before I try to solve this equation, uh, again, we have to classify it. Uh, this is a linear equation in, in the standard form. Just by comparing it to the standard form. Uh, and uh, it's not a separable equation. Fine, so uh, let's try to see if we can solve anything here. Um, so actually, y prime plus y equal to zero, that is still a linear equation. 
but not only it's a linear equation, it is also separable. Okay, so if it is separable, then I can try to solve it. So then uh, write it as y prime is equal to minus y, which means that dy over dx is minus y, or dy over y is equal to minus dx, uh, integrate, and uh, that should give you nature log of absolute value of y equal to minus x plus constant, right? So that's an implicit solution of y prime plus y equal to zero. And uh, I want to find the explicit solution, so then um, I need to exponentiate both sides. Absolute value of y is e to the minus x plus c. Uh, so just like we did this uh, during the previous lecture, that means that absolute value of y is the same thing as e to the c times e to the minus x by the properties of exponentials. Now, e to the c is an arbitrary constant. So c is an arbitrary constant. e to the c is another arbitrary constant. Uh, so I can denote it by d, e to the minus x. And again, d is greater than 0 because uh, e to any power cannot be a negative number or zero. All right, so then, uh, just like we did last time, if absolute value of y is equal to something, that means that y is equal to either that something or minus that. Well, but uh, d, uh, c was an arbitrary constant, e to the c is an arbitrary positive constant, but then I am allowed to multiply it by plus one or minus one, and the outcome is still going to be a solution. So that means that uh, actually I can multiply e to the minus x by anything, and I get a solution. So uh, let's call this big E, that's a generic constant, times e to the minus x. So E is any real number. OK, so what I did, I just solved uh, my linear equation, except that I made my life easier instead of solving an equation with E to the x. On the uh, right side, I solve it with 0 on the right side. OK, so then the question is, would I be able to find uh, a solution of my original equation? And uh, one can use the following trick. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to assume, basically out of the blue at this point, that we can write Uh, a solution of uh, y prime plus y equal to e to the x, then I can write it in the following way. So I have an equation with a non-zero number on the right-hand side. Here I have the same equation, but with zero on the right-hand side. I figured out the solution of that equation to be e to the uh, some constant times e to the minus x. And uh, what I'm going to try to do, I'm going to try to write the solution of uh, this equation 
as uh, follows as y of x equal to v of x times e to the minus x. Right, so basically I took the solution of the equation uh, which looks very similar to the original one but it had zero on the right hand side. That solution uh, looked like a one parameter family capital E times e to the minus x. And so what uh, I'm trying to do, I'm trying to find the solution of my original equation in the form where I replaced capital E by an unknown function v of x times e to the minus x. So for whatever reason, I'm doing this and let's see if I will succeed. Well, so uh, what do I need to do? I need to find v, right? How can I find v? I know that y has to be a solution of this OD. So I need to make sure that I can select v such that this product is a solution of the same OD. So how do I make sure that v is a solution? I need to take a derivative of this function. y prime of x is going to be by the product rule v prime of x e to the minus x minus v of x e to the minus x, right? So I'm just, just applying the product rule. Uh, and so now I have uh, the function, I have its derivative. I want the equation to be satisfied. So what am I doing? I'm substituting. So then uh, v prime, I'm going to draw up uh, writing O of x. So v prime e to the minus x minus v e to the minus x, that's my y prime, plus y, which is v e to the minus x, and this should be equal to e to the x. Uh, okay, so what uh, happens now, what happens is that actually two of these terms, v e to the minus x and minus v e to the minus x, they will cancel each other out. And uh, my equation becomes v prime e to the minus x equal to e to the x. So I had an ODE. I assume that my solution has a particular form, which involved an unknown function. Uh, I substituted that uh, form of a solution that I guessed into my equation, and I ended up with another equation, another ODE, but now for V. Original equation was linear. What about this equation? It basically says, if I divide both sides by E to the minus X, or if I multiply both sides by E to the X, which is the same thing, I'll have that V prime is E to the X times E to the X, which is E to the two X. So, and v prime equal to, to, equal to e to the 2x, that is in particular a separable equation. Uh, trivially separable because the right hand side is just a function of x, and the function of y basically is 1. So, I'm going to solve the separable equation. Um, let's see. Uh, so dv dx is e to the 2x, so therefore dv is e to the 2x dx, and therefore I can integrate both sides, and the integrals are really simple. Uh, integral of dv is v, and the integral of e to the 2x, 1 half e to the 2x, uh, in principle plus a constant. Okay? All right, so I have a v like this, and then I take it and I substitute it into my y of x, right? So v I know. So then y of x. 
should be one half e to the two x plus c times e to the minus x. And then I can distribute and I'll get uh, one half, so y is one half e to the two x e to the minus x plus c e to the minus x. And I can make a small simplification, e to the two x times e to the minus x is the same thing as e to the two x minus x. Right, so this is e to the two x minus x and two x minus x is x. So one half e to the x plus c e to the minus x. Okay, so what is this? That is uh, one parameter family uh, of solutions. of my additional equation, uh, y prime plus y equal to e to the x. And therefore, what I got, I got a complete, full, uh, what we call general solution, right? It's a solution uh, for the first order equation, I expect solutions to depend on one unknown parameter. And what I got is a solution that depends on one unknown parameter. So that means that I fully solved my uh, ODE. Uh, note a couple of things here, so I'm going to make a note. So the solution to this equation, the simpler equation, where the right-hand side was replaced by zero, was capital E times E to the minus X. So it's an arbitrary constant times E to the minus X. And I look at the solution that I found here at my one parameter family, and I see that c e to the minus x makes an appearance in the solution. It's added to something which does not have c in it. So then this c e to the minus x actually is a solution, one parameter family of solutions, to the problem where the right hand side was replaced by zero. So c e to the minus x is a one parameter family of solutions of y prime plus y equal to zero. And let's look at the remaining piece here. The remaining piece is one half e to the x. So if I take one half e to the x, uh, let's call it y p. And let's make it one half e to the x. So if I take the derivative of this, y p prime is still one half e to the x. And then if I take uh, y p prime and to it, I'll add y p, that's e one half e to the x plus y p itself is again, one half e to the x. So the outcome is e to the x. Fine, but then what does YP do? It solves my original equation, but it does not have any arbitrary constants in it, right? Because it's just one half e to the x. So this then, this function solves the original OD. And so you see that uh, the solution of uh, this one parameter family of solutions or the general solution of my uh, linear ODE with uh, some function on the right-hand side 
it actually consists of the sum of two pieces. Piece number one is a general solution of an equation with zero on the right hand side. And piece number two is not a general because it doesn't have a constant, but uh, it is a particular solution of uh, the equation with e to the x on the right hand side. So uh, we're going to then use the following terminology. Uh, so given a linear OD uh, y prime plus p of x y equal to f of x, we're going to say uh, that uh, this ODE is homogeneous if f of x is a function which is equal to zero everywhere, otherwise Otherwise, the ODE is non-homogeneous. Okay, so what we found is, in the example, Uh, y prime plus y equal to e to the x. Now, this equation does have zero on the right-hand side, so this is a non-homogeneous. Equation. Then the second equation that I ended up solving there, y prime plus y equal to zero, this is certainly a homogeneous equation. And so what we found uh, that the general solution of my original OD, non-homogeneous OD, y prime plus y equal to e to the x, that uh, the solution is the sum of a particular solution. Of y prime plus y equal e to the x. And the general solution of the corresponding uh, non-homogeneous equation. All right, so that's what we found here, right? Because uh, we saw that the solution consists of a solution, a particular solution of a non-homogeneous equation, and this was a general solution of a homogeneous equation. All right, so how do we solve then? So if I give you any equation, any linear equation, then I could use uh, the same procedure that I just outlined, 
to, so, to solve an arbitrary uh, first order linear equation, right? So if I have an equation like this, I can always write its corresponding homogeneous equation. Homogeneous equation automatically is going to be separable, right? Because you'll have y prime plus p of x times y equal to zero. If you move p of x, y on the right side, the resulting equation is always separable. So you can solve this separable equation. And then you can use this procedure where replaced a coefficient in front of e to the minus x, replace it by a function, and then uh, modify your ODE, substitute the function to ODE, get a new ODE, which is going to end up being separable, solve it, and you'll find the solution of uh, general solution of a linear equation. Uh, but rather than doing this, uh, I mean, if you do this, then you'll see that uh, a certain pattern of solving the equation emerges. And uh, I'm just going to describe that pattern, and we're going to use it in the future to solve first order linear ODEs. Uh, so how to solve? Uh, the OD y prime plus p of x y equal to q of x. Step number one, uh, you'll have to do this. Uh, compute uh, the so-called integrating factor uh, as denoted by mu of x and this would be e to the power p of x dx integral right so you need to integrate the function p of x and then uh, use that integral as a power of e to get something called integrating factor step number two multiply the equation by mu of x. Uh, if you do that, you'll get mu times y prime plus mu times p y equal to mu times q. Okay, so um, let's check something that happens in this case. Uh, uh, let's figure out what mu prime is. So I'm going to compute mu prime. That is e to the power integral of p of x dx prime. If I take the derivative uh, of the exponential to some power, right, I have to use the chain rule. So it's e to the integral of p of x dx times the derivative of the inside into the derivative of the integral p of x dx. Uh, but you might recall that uh, if you're taking derivative of antiderivative, then you're actually undoing what you did uh, while integrating, so you should end up with a regional function of x. So then this is nothing but uh, the exponential is my mu. So this would be the same thing as mu times and dx for the integral is the function in the interior of the integral inside the integral so you get this mu p okay so if that is true then i can go back up to this equation and now i realize that mu p is equal to uh, mu prime So therefore, this equation can be written as mu 
y prime mu p is mu prime plus mu prime y equal to mu q. So, and what that is, is that mu y prime plus mu prime y, that is actually derivative of mu y. So what am I getting? I'm getting that if I multiply my equation by the integrating factor, then what I see is that is that uh, the derivative of mu y mu y must be equal to mu q. So, but then that means I can compute what mu y is simply by integrating mu q. And so then y will be one over mu integral of mu q dx. Uh, okay, let me, let, let me, let me, let me rearrange this for a second. So, this goes here. And this will go above this. All right. So then uh, this tells us how to solve a linear equation. So let's do an example. Uh, in fact, let's do the same example as I just did. Uh, find the solution uh, y prime plus y equal to e uh, to the x. We we'll already solved this equation, so we're just going to find out if uh, uh, we can solve it in the way I just explained. So step number one, again, I need to find the integrating factor mu of x. What's the integrating factor? It's e to the power integral of p. In this case, the coefficient front of y is 1. So integral of 1 dx. And that should be e to the x. And then if I multiply my equation by the integrating factor, we have just seen that what this will do, it will change the equation to this form. So if I multiply my equation by the integrating factor, I should get mu y prime equal to uh, mu q. So who is q and who is mu? Uh, mu is e to the x, so e to the x y prime is equal to e to the x, and uh, what is q? q is also e to the x, so that is e to the power 2x. And so I can then find e to the x y by integrating e to the 2x and that is one half e to the two x uh, plus a constant. And uh, so if I have e to the x y equal to this expression, then y I can find simply by dividing both sides by e to the x. So to this gives one half e to the x plus c e to the minus x, and that's exactly the same solution as we found before, right? So that means that the method really works. Let's do another example. Uh, let's take, uh, let's see what I can do here. Uh, let's try 
<coughs> an equation like this, uh, e to the x, uh, y prime, plus x times y, let's say, um, is equal to x cubed. So I can solve this equation again by using the integrating factor. So first step, find the integrating factor. Uh, mu of x is equal to e to the power integral of what is p in this case? It's x, integral of x dx. Uh, and that is going to be uh, x squared over 2. So e to the x squared over 2. Actually, let me simplify life uh, a little bit. I'm going to put x on the, I'm just going to solve the equation with x on the right hand side. And so then number two, and we're going to use the integrating factor to find the solution. If I multiply the left-hand side of the equation by the integrating factor, I should get integrating factor uh, times y prime, right? That's what we discovered uh, over here. And this should be equal to the same thing as uh, before, so x times the integrating factor e to the x squared over 2. Okay, and so uh, this means that I can determine e to the x squared over 2 times y by integrating x e to the x squared over 2 dx. And this integral can be computed by using substitution. If u is x squared over 2, then du is the derivative of this, x times dx. So the integral is of e to the u, and then x dx becomes du. So e to the u, and plus constant. And then we recall what e to, the u, e to the u is. It's x squared over 2. So e to the x squared over 2 plus c. And so we found that e to the x squared over 2 y oops, is the same thing as e to the x squared over 2 plus c. So we can solve for y. y is... 1 plus c e to the minus x squared 2. Okay, and then uh, in the next lecture, we're going to do more examples of uh, the linear equation.